Hello. In this video, we are going to calculate the residual entropy, the entropy left at absolute zero, of carbon monoxide. And we're going to use the Boltzmann relationship to do this. So recall that carbon monoxide has the following structure. And also recall that according to Boltzmann, the entropy is equal to the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of W, where W is the number of different ways that we can arrange the system. So if we have simply one carbon monoxide atom, we could arrange it with the carbon to the left, or we could arrange it with the oxygen atom to the left. So there are two possible configurations. Similarly, if I bring in a second carbon monoxide atom uh, molecule, the first can have any one of two possible orientations, and the second one can have either of two possible orientations. So let me consider that I have Avogadro's number of carbon monoxide atoms. So that means that the total number of ways I can arrange these atoms, each one has two possible arrangements, and since there is an Avogadro's number, the total number of possible arrangements is going to be 2 to the Avogadro's number power. So now we substitute this into the Boltzmann relationship. So we have the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of 2 to the Avogadro's number power. Again, we're going to use an important relationship of exponents that the natural log of x to the a power is equal to a times the natural log of x. I can take a power and pull it in front of the natural log as a coefficient. If I do that in this case, I get that the Boltzmann constant times Avogadro's number times the natural log of 2. Now, this combination of constants is its own important constant. So if I multiply the Boltzmann constant times Avogadro's number, this is simply the gas constant R. So this reduces to R times the natural log of 2. We know that the gas constant has the value of 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. And we also know that the natural log of 2 is 0 0.693. So if we multiply those out, we get that the expected theoretical residual entropy for carbon monoxide is going to be 5.76 joules per Kelvin mole. Now it turns out that the experimental value is known, and we can compare that, is actually 4.2 joules per Kelvin mole. So the question arises, though we're very close in our calculation, why were we not able to calculate the exact value? And this is the reason. In carbon monoxide, we assume that each of the two orientations of carbon monoxide were equally likely. This is nearly true because carbon monoxide has a small but non-zero dipole moment. The dipole moment of carbon monoxide is 0 0.122 dBi, which is small but still not zero. And rather surprisingly, when we have a carbon-oxygen bond, we would expect that since oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, that the uh, negative end of the carbon monoxide molecule would be on the oxygen. As it turns out, because of the uh, peculiar bonding in carbon monoxide, that the negative end is actually on the carbon rather than the oxygen. And this has incredibly important effects when carbon monoxide acts as a ligand, because when carbon monoxide binds to a metal, it invariably binds to the metal through the carbon end and not through the oxygen end. I thank you very much for your attention.
Have a good one.